Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is an in and out tutorial for Final Cut Pro 10. I'd like to talk about the ins and outs of Final Cut's new editing paradigm, namely storylines, connected clips, and compound clips. Because this is what has the most people confused when they pick up the program for the first time. First, I want to go over their basic definition and implementation. This dark gray area here in the middle of your project is the primary storyline. If I select a clip in my media browser and insert it into my project by hitting W on the keyboard or append it into my project by hitting E, the clip will be added to the primary storyline. Connected clips are another way to add shots into your project. I'm going to select another clip in the media browser and then position my skimmer in the timeline over one of the other clips. Then hit Q on the keyboard. Now my connected clip is attached to the primary storyline at this point on this clip. It will stay with it even if I decide to move that shot elsewhere in the project. Finally, the last major clip convention of Final Cut 10 is the compound clip. You can take several clips, storylines, titles, whatever, and collapse them down into a single clip. I'm just going to lasso all three of these clips, right click, and choose New Compound Clip from the menu. The compound clip plays back exactly as the original three clips did but now is condensed and can either exist in the storyline or as a connected clip on its own. And if I click this little icon, it'll open up in its own timeline, giving me access to my original three clips. I can edit them and I can move them around as I wish. And then the compound clip will update in my project. Okay. So now you have a basic understanding of how these clips are applied. What you need to know now is when to use them or even if to use them. Here's a basic project that I want to build. It contains voiceover narration and video that I shot. When an editor begins an edit, they start by assembling the foundation for their project. This is often called a role in the business. a role can be video or audio, or a combination of the both. For a documentary, it's typically the voiceover and or the interviews. For a music video, it's the song. For other projects, it's other elements. Final Cut Pro 10 is designed so that the primary storyline should contain your A-roll. In my project, I have a clip of voiceover narration that I recorded. To keep things simple, I already marked the clips I need for my narration by going through the audio, marking an in and an out point, and then making it a favorite by hitting F on the keyboard. Using the favorite shortcut is a great way to keep track of selects and separate the good shots from the bad. If I twirl down this disclosure triangle for my narration track, I can see all of my favorite selections. Clicking on one of these will automatically recreate the range for it. I can also select all of them at the same time and hit W on the keyboard to drop them into the project in the order that they exist in the clip. In addition to the narration, I have a few sound up moments from my video that I want to include in my A-roll. I'm just going to use the up and down arrow keys to navigate to the right spot in the project and then I'll add those shots. For simplicity's sake, I created a favorites for them as well so you don't have to watch me hunting them down. I'm going to twirl down this disclosure triangle and click on the favorite to select it and then hit W to insert it between these two clips of narration. Then I'll slide over a couple of clips in the project and go to my second sound up. This time, I'm just going to click this little green line on my clip, which is another way to select the favorite, and then insert it with W. Now that I have my A roll down, I need to space it out properly to pace my story. It doesn't matter at this early stage if the spacing is perfect, I'll have plenty of opportunity down the line to make changes to the timing. Since we're working in the primary storyline, Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't permit us to have spaces between the clips. This is a major change from other editing programs, including previous versions of Final Cut. Since all other clips are attached to the primary storyline, there must be a clip at every point in the project for those connected clips to attach to. But that doesn't mean we can't separate our audio tracks from one another. It just means that we need to create gap clips. A gap clip is a clip of nothing, used as a placeholder in time. They are not visible in the project, 
which is not the same as saying that they're like a slug clip from Final Cut 7. Slug clips are actually visible clips of black. Gap clips are clips that are invisible to the viewer. They can be added in numerous ways. One way is the Position tool. Go to the Tools menu and choose Position tool, or hit P on the keyboard. If I select the last clip in my A-roll and drag it to the right, a gap clip is created to fill the space. Now the Position tool is simple, but it's limited and it's not very precise. If you try this with a clip in the middle, you're going to roll over the clip next to it, unless you first select all the clips to the end of the project. The nudge keys will create a gap clip with a little bit more precision. I select my clip and then I tap the period key to move the clip one frame at a time to the right. The comma key will move it to the left. And if I hold down shift, I can increase the movement to 10 frames at a time. Much more precise than the position tool, but with the same issue where you have to worry about rolling over the other clips. If you have just a few clips, it's not that big of a deal, but with a large amount of A-roll, it can be a bit tedious. And that's going to bring us to my favorite way to add a gap. Place the playhead at the edit point between two clips, and hit Option W to insert a gap clip. This is going to place a 3 second gap in between clips without needing to select anything beforehand. I prefer this method when I'm creating pacing in my primary storyline because I can add gaps and then trim them without the need of a mouse. That makes it much, much faster for me. So I've added my gap. Now I'm just going to back up for a second and play through the edit so that I can get a feel for how much pause I want in my narration. And up around the block. I hit stop when I reach the point where I'm ready for the next clip to begin. Then I trim the end of the gap with the shortcut Option Right Bracket. This is the Final Cut equivalent to the Avid Tops and Tails shortcut. It's a one-click trim operation that works even without a clip selection. I can just go through my narration, add any gaps that I need, and then trim them down and it's quick and it's easy. In part two of this tutorial, we'll continue exploring storylines and also cover when to use connected clips and compound clips.